said, we'll move on into the next topic here, and that is college football's projections for the season. And when we say projections, we're talking about the not good kind. Uh, Dennis Dodd over at CBS Sports wrote a very interesting article, and this is the headline. It says, Coronavirus in college football, hospitalizations, deaths projected by data analysts if FBS plays in 2020. It says, COVID-19 does not discriminate, and young athletes are not immune to complications. So, depending on who you want to listen to in the media, you can go through and find whatever positive stuff you want to find, right? It doesn't really affect young people. It doesn't, it, the death rates are more for elderly people in nursing homes, et cetera. And it's people that have pre-existing conditions and people that, you know, you can see all of this. However, when you look through and, and see there's, you know, one out of every however many people that will be drastically affected by this virus, and we have no way to stop it, right? We do have some ways of fighting it right now. We do have remedies, I guess you could say. But we don't really know what's going on. Damien and Matt jumped in. One said, sup. The other said, what's up? How are you fellas doing over on the YouTube? So here's, here's the questions with college football. It says, ever since the coronavirus pandemic started a few months ago, most of the talk in the college sports space has centered around beginnings. When can we practice? When can we play? When can we hug? And when we can hold a college football again? Uh, noted University of Illinois computer science professor, has some troubling data to consider regarding widespread infection and even death. Dr. Sheldon Jacobson told CBS Sports he expects a 30 to 50% infection rate of the approximately 13,000 players competing in FBS this season. Based on his research, he also projects three to seven deaths among those players due to COVID-19. He said a few of them could end up in the hospital and you'll have a small number who could die. I don't want to sugarcoat it for you. I just want to give you the facts. If everybody comes together under normal circumstances, we will probably see that kind of outcome. He made his projections from CDC data that estimates one death per thousand people who have symptoms in the college age group, and that's 18 to 22 years old. Taking into account that range in medical care provided for football players, the death rate would actually be lower than the general population, Jacob said. Uh, He stressed those numbers could change. Based on the available statistics, less than 1% of the U.S. population has been diagnosed with coronavirus. Approximately 5% of the 2.6 million cases in the U.S. have resulted in death. Obviously, not everyone has been tested. However, with students assembling in large numbers on campuses in the fall, it ramps up the overall risk and likelihood of infection. He said, I guarantee someone is going to die. That is insane. I mean, it's you can't guarantee somebody will die. But, but here's the thing. I'm, I don't even know how to ask this without sounding like I'm not a crazy skeptic in the science denier. Okay. I'm not, I'm not that guy. How many college students die every year? A lot. I mean, alcohol poisoning, you know, just, just in, just in vehicle deaths. I mean, are just random heart attacks. You know, if three people die out of every college student athlete, that's, that's sad, but I don't. Here's the problem: if, if they, they die, they'll die COVID, from other things. If they if they die of COVID only, and they only got COVID because they came back to play football, then yes, you can actually trace it to something that could have been prevented that we shouldn't, that we just shouldn't have done. Um, they would they would be alive, and therein lies the situation of it's. Then it's more important to not do that thing. Right, um, right. Uh, the it, it, the chat absolutely blew up. By the way, let me let me dive in and, okay. and maybe you can jump in on some of these. Matt All said right. politicians are just trying to lower the burden of Medicare by taking out people over sixty five. I'm I'm not going to get into that. Uh, Matt said Matt Miller said, "Can we stop listening to the projection data? They have been wrong the whole time and way off in most cases." Also, positive note: deaths are still down eighty percent as a nation since April. Uh, yes, I agree with you. Now that that is correct. By the way, is every projection we have heard on this thing has been dead ass wrong and way over grossly inflated. So if this is grossly inflated and it's three to seven, there is a world in which we could have zero. Yes, and now don't forget again, like you were just talking about, there are still players that may die during the season or before the season from things other than this, 
Well, like there, it, there are kids that do it every year. Yes. I mean, every, every year, just, just less than three weeks ago here in Olive Branch, three Mississippi state students died in a random car accident, single car accident by themselves, hurt no one else. But we don't know what happened. We don't know, you know, somebody texting and driving. And we don't know. Nobody else was involved. They didn't have alcohol or anything in their system. They were just driving home and didn't make it home, and their car was found on the side of the road. It, and that, that's know? just one thing. I mean, they, uh, what was the kid's name at Maryland? Jordan McNair, yes. I want to say. That, yes. now that, that's so, a heat exhaustion thing. Now yeah. that, but that death shouldn't have happened. That death should no, not No, it have shouldn't happened. have happened, but it happened because of football. There are a ton of things that could happen, and, and now you just toss one more in there. I'm not saying to take COVID-19 lightly. I'm saying... No, no, you and I have taken it very seriously. Yeah. And we agree with taking it seriously. Yes, and I think that you can still take it seriously and play football. Uh, McKinnon said something to think about. The head of the CDC in the U.S. has come forth and said, the virus is likely much more widespread than we previously thought, just highly asymptomatic, which also drives down the death toll by a considerable number. Yes, if you look at the death rate right now, it really, it's like... 0.05% or 0.5%, whatever it is, if you count in all the antibody tests, right? Really, they are projecting that it is 10 times worse than we thought it was. And not worse, but 10 times more people have had it, which would mean over 20 million people have had this virus. And now we don't know how many deaths there could have been from that. My guess would be not that many, you know? Either way. uh, Uh, And hang on now, I... We, we don't want to just count deaths, okay? If somebody is hospitalized with this thing and their lungs are jacked up, we, we don't know the long-term effect of that. Yeah. I want football more than anybody. I want us to get back to sports. Today I'm feeling very pessimistic because I feel like we, we are so close to being there and everything that I love and I'm waiting to see happen is I feel like falling by the wayside. Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. You had some stuff planned uh, for this week, as a matter of fact. So yes, yeah. I was supposed to be going on vacation, and that is no longer happening. Yeah. Um, well, listen, that's a that's a that's a minor middle thing. Middle class, you know, rich person's problem. Okay, I yeah. don't have a real problem. I have a problem that I don't get to go take a break. Everybody, we have eighty percent of the country not working, and I've worked through this whole thing. I would like a break. I'm not going to get that break. That's okay. It's part of it. Yeah, no, you're, you're right about that. Uh, McKinnon said, hell, I guarantee at least one collegiate athlete or football player dies every year. It happens literally every year. Yeah, we just hit on that. Uh, Matt said, those kids are much more likely to catch something from them ladies on campus that bleach won't kill. Uh, yeah, 100%. True, but that won't kill you and usually won't hospitalize you. This is, uh, this is very true. Damien said, government doesn't give a damn about us. That's why they're trying to kill us. Why do you think there's a limited amount of tests happening? It's because they want to take us out one by one. Ooh, we got some conspiracy theorists in Love this Joker that. today. Uh, Matt said people got an 82% chance of catching these hands upside the head. And then McKinnon said NYU basketball player was shot and killed last weekend. Yeah, there you go. And Ben said the students should not be pressured to play and should get a free redshirt if they want. We agree with that. Oh, no, that, that uh, up, we, are, we are lockstep and draw on, no doubt. Yes. No doubt. Yes, 100%. If they choose to not play... They get a free red shirt. Yeah. Uh, Scott Shearer said, notice a lot of the athletes who are in amazing shape have been asymptomatic. Yeah. They have a, a ton of people that got this thing have been asymptomatic. All like, of the college kids that have come back to campus and like it's, it is spread through Baton Rouge and, and Clemson are the two like most famous or whatever right now. At least football program wise. And football yeah. wise that, that we have hard numbers on and not a single kid has even experienced minor cold symptoms, like the definition of asymptomatic, which is a good thing. These are these are not bad things, but they're still things, and I don't know what they mean because I'm not a decision maker, and I I just want something in life to come home to outside of people <laughs> who live here and who love me. I understand. I understand that completely. That's a... Nope. It, Oh, Obi Matt jumps in again. Said the masks are the government's way to give everybody vaccines. Um, and then Damien said all the statistics are nothing but a bunch of BS to scare people. Yeah, yeah, we we got. I love the conspiracy guys. I love you. I'm right there with you, fellas. I it, trust me. We're all on the same side here. Um, <laughs> Matt Miller said if I was a coach privately, I would trust. Uh, I would try to push towards herd immunity. I, hey. 
Well, I think I, I mean I really be. do believe that's what Dabo's doing and that's what Coach O's doing. I mean, I, I I might be wrong on that. I think the reason the numbers went from five to twenty to thirty-five in both those places is is I think they're like, oh, uh, Ray sick. Yeah, send about nine dudes in Ray's room right now. All right. Yep. You guys just hang out for the weekend. Uh, so, along with uh, this one guy, Jacobson, from the University of Illinois that was doing the projections, uh, Jacobson's estimates were backed up by Dr. My- uh, excuse me, I cannot talk. Dr. Michael Sag, professor of medicine and infectious disease at UAB. He said, that's not a hard projection to make now that I'm sitting here thinking about it. Any death would be horrible. More than a couple would be a shame, actually. So, yeah, it, while it is... While it's all terrible and whatnot, it, it, we're still sitting in the same... Ben said, I don't know about those conspiracy theories. It, we're just appeasing everybody. Ben, it's okay. It's okay. Let everybody have their own free thoughts. That's what we're here for. We're here to have fun. Have a good time. And these kind of numbers and these kind of things are not uh, having fun. So, at, with all of this, I think we are still in the same situation that we were before. We don't really know the long-term effects of this virus. We don't really know what is going to happen with the college football season. And it's more or less determining, is it worth the risk to the players? Is it worth the risk to the coaches? Is it worth it to basically everybody? And if anybody doesn't want to be a part of it, it should not be held against them going forward. But I hope that we do have a football season. Is that fair to say, Chris? Yeah, that's 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 kind of how we feel. Yeah, so we'll we'll see what goes. Uh, McKinnon said, as a side note, since I've been MIA from the show, just had to poke fun at Chris that his two quarterbacks for his beloved Pats are both Auburn alums. War I'm Eagle, not a, good sir. You always act as if I hate Auburn. No, it's me. me. You see he knows the world differently. the The enemy of my enemy is my friend. Okay. Yeah. I, yeah. I have never hated Auburn or had disdain for Auburn whatsoever. Nope. Nope. That's just all me. That's all me. Uh, Matt Miller said, if you can catch this thing twice, this was all just a big waste of time, money, and pain. Yeah, that would be an, that'd be a real shame for Dabo and Coach O. If oh, you no, it yeah, 100% they will be kind of found negligible. Is there, is there a chance that one of their kids gets sick to a point where those coaches could lose their jobs? It, it's possible. We're talking two national championship winning coaches. But it, it, one might be the most beloved person in the state. Only if you could prove that they tried to get the kids sick. That's yeah. the only way that you could. And, and I mean, how do you prove that, really? Well, I mean, I mean the, the, if if the coach is saying, "Hey, I, if the players say I was I was told to go in Ray's room because Ray was sick and they wanted me to catch it," like, well, in that case, yeah. Uh, but I think they got to be they got to be smarter about it than that, right? No, they're not going to be smarter about it than that. That's exactly how it's going to go down. Why can't Ray play video games tonight? Oh, he's sick. I oh, want you go in there and play with him anyway. He's fine. Yeah, he'll he'll be fine. He he said he wasn't feeling nothing. It's all good. Good gracious. All right, let's jump off college football for just a little bit. We'll dive into. 